This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast, part of the Deluxe Edition Network. Please go check out the April podcasts of the month, or April, May podcasts of the month, which are, hold on one second, um, the Real Drunks and Horsing Around podcast. They're great people. They run very good podcasts over there. And also go check out all the other podcasts on the network where you can go to deluxeeditionnetwork.com where you'll find them all. You won't be disappointed. They're a great group of people that run their own podcasts. Thank you so very much. And today we're talking about the history of the New York Jets episode four, the search for greatness from 1990 to 1996. Whew. Dick Steinberg initially sought to hire Michigan State coach George Pierres as Jets head coach, but the university refused to release him from his contract. Steinberg then hired Cincinnati Bengals offensive coordinator Bruce Coslett. Coslett's offensive schemes, described as state of the art by Sports Illustrated, to help the Bengals to suit the Super Bowl following the 1988 season. The Jets' poor record in 1989 had given them the second pick in the draft. The team selected star Penn State running back Blair Thomas, who is expected to have a strong career with the Jets. Instead, Thomas played on the team for four injury-plagued, unproductive years and was cut before the 1994 season. Oslet's first season proved only slightly better than Joe Walton's last. The Jets finished 6-10 in the 1991 draft, the Jets lost another opportunity to draft a star quarterback as a draft day deal that would have allowed them to select Brett Favre fell through. The Jets had more success in the 91 season. They built a 7-8 to eight record with one game remaining and needed a win against Miami to clinch a playoff berth. New York kicker Raul Aligre recently signed to replace aging kicker Pat Leahy, who had been kicking for the Jets since the days of Joe Namath, made one field goal to force overtime and another to win in the extra period. The victory gave the Jets their first playoff berth since 1986. In the wildcard game, a Ken O'Brien pass into the end zone in the final seconds of the game was intercepted, and the Jets lost to Houston 7-10. After a strong performance by rookie quarterback Browning Neagle in the team's 5-0-1992 preseason, Coslett promoted him to the starting lineup. Despite throwing for a total of 366 yards against the Atlanta Falcons in the opener. Then the second highest yardage toll for a quarterback making his NFL debut, the team lost 20 to 17. The Jets lost their first four games. Wide receiver Al Toon retired on November 27, 1992, having suffered the ninth concussion of his career earlier in the season. Two days later, defensive end Dennis Bird collided with teammate Scott Merceau when Chiefs quarterback Dave Krieg stepped forward in the pocket as the two players were about to sandwich him. Mergeau managed to walk away and continue his career with New York, but Bird suffered a fracture to his C5 vertebrae that left him partially paralyzed. Inspired by Bird's persistent high spirits, New York traveled to Buffalo the following week and defeated the AFC champion Bills. The Jets finished the season 4-12. and Prior to the 93 season, the Jets obtained Bengals quarterback Boomer Esiason, who had worked with Coslett in Cincinnati. Steinberg signed veteran safety Ronnie Lott to shore up the defense. O'Brien's career with the Jets ended with an offseason trade to the New Green Bay Packers, and running back Freeman McNeil retired after 12 seasons. The Jets suffered another December collapse. They lost four of their last five to finish 8-8. Eight and eight. The Jets would have made the playoffs by winning their last game, but were shut out at the Astrodome by the Oilers. Following the season, Steinberg fired Kozla and replaced him with defensive coordinator Pete Carroll. 
Carroll's first season, 1994, started well. Going into a November home game against Miami, the Jets were 6-5. and five. A victory over the Dolphins would tie them for the NFC East lead. The Jets built leads of 17 to nothing and 24 to 6 before Dan Marino and the Dolphins cut the lead to 24 to 21 and got the ball back for a final minute drive. Marino completed a pass into Jets territory with just over 30 seconds remaining. With the clock running, the Dolphins acted like Marino would spike the ball to stop the clock. However, Marino faked the spike and tossed a ball to Mark Ingram in the end zone. For the winning touchdown the loss started yet another december collapse the jets would not win another game for the rest of the season prior to the season finale the jets announced that steinberg was ill with stomach cancer he died the following september the team fired carroll after the season replaced him with former philadelphia eagles coach rich kotite hess was also named hess also named kotite as general manager as well controversy before began before the 1995 season when the Jets drafted Kyle Brady over Warren Sapp. At the press conference announcing Kotite's hiring, Hess told the media, I'm 80 years old. I want results now. However, the first game of the Kotite area era proved to be a harbinger, a 52-14 loss to the Dolphins. A month later, they lost the Oakland Raiders 47-10 in the Jets' sole national television champion, national television appearance of the season. The Jets defeated the Seattle Seahawks on the Sunday following Thanksgiving after an inspirational speech by Hess, but once again had trouble in December, losing all four games in the month to finish 3-13. and 13. In 1996, the Jets brought in veteran quarterback Neil O'Donnell, who had just led Pittsburgh to Super Bowl 30 to lead the offense. The Jets, for the first time since the league's merged, were in possession of the first pick overall in the NFL draft, which they used to select wide receiver Keyshawn Johnson. O'Donnell proved injury-prone, and the Jets suffered the worst season in franchise history. They lost their first eight games, beat the Arizona Cardinals in Temple, then proceeded to lose their remaining seven games. Two days before the season finale on December 20, 1996, Kotite announced his resignation effective at season's end. After the game, a 31-28 home loss to the Dolphins, Kotite was hit with a full cup of beer as he left the field. Another fan held up a sign, the end of an error. And that's the search for success episode of um, the New York Jets. Next, or wait, Saturday, I will be doing uh, episode five. Return to Respectability, and that will be from 1997 to 2014. So I might break that one up. I might do the Parcells era in one, and or I might do them all. We'll see. All right. Thank you so very much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to go check out the eight May podcasts of the month, which are Horsing Around and Real Drunks. You can find them on the deluxeeditionnetwork.com where you'll find other great podcasts including The Talking Shit Show with Mark Bensett Jr. and Brian. Also, go check out Flett's Movie and Pop Culture Review 13. And go check out all the other ones on there. They're all great in their ways that they make their podcast and they truly would appreciate it. And if you're new to the channel or are returning, please sub subscribe, like, and comment. And hit that notification bell so that you never miss another day or moment of this podcast. And if you haven't yet, please tell more people about us because we're almost to a thousand and we really need the help. Thank you so very much and I will see you all on Saturday. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to DeluxeEditionNetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com.